Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, Jackie Lappin is training us on how to attract clients by getting booked for stages, podcasts, and summits. Jackie, I have a couple of get to know you questions. First one, uh, you're an expert in the field of getting booked for stages, podcasts, and summits, an unusual expertise. How did you come about to develop this area of expertise? Well, I discovered that my clients kept looking for more uh, stages and they asked me to book them. And frankly, uh, I didn't want to do that. But I had been booking people for radio shows and podcasts for a gazillion years, not to mention TV shows and other kinds of media in the early part of, part of my career. And I thought, well, I know how to do this. I, can, I know how to book people. So why don't I just tell people how to book themselves? And so that's how it began. Okay. Now, I noticed that you have got a program called Speaker Tunity. Unusual name. What is it designed to do? And why do you think the marketplace wants it? Well, the name says, says it all. Speaker and Opportunity. And what that does is we know that people need to get exposed to more speaking opportunities, but they don't know how to find them. They don't know what tools they need. They don't have the time to go outreach for them. And so we stepped into the breach and there's not people that were going to book for them anymore. Those people have sort of gone out of the business. So the leader has to take the responsibility for their own booking. And we just wanted to shortcut it so we make that get on stages faster, easier, so they can generate more revenue and change more lives. That sounds like quite a plan. <clears throat> uh, audience, when you have questions, please type them into the chat and I'll pose them at intervals during Jackie's talk. Uh, you'll be sent a link to the recording of Jackie's talk, hopefully later this evening. But I encourage you to take notes anyway, because when you take notes, you increase the absorption rate of Jackie's content by as much as 30%. Jackie, are you ready to rock the stage? Because the stage is all yours, ready to be rocked. Thank you, Roger. Well, thank you. I'm so delighted to be amongst this wonderful community of folks. And I know that you are, um, you know, Vancouver is your home, but man, there are so many of you for so many other places. and. Um, what I have to say, I think will help you in most anywhere that you are. So I want to show you how to attract clients by getting booked for stages, podcasts, and virtual summits. Um, and there's a lot of few other nuances in here too that we'll kind of uh, clue you into. So what you're going to learn today, well, that why visibility matters, the what kinds of opportunities await, what tools you need to get booked, how you get, get a booker to say yes, that's really pretty important, and how and where you find the right opportunities. So, um, and then how do you track down those bookers? It is really imperative that you know how to do that. I'm trying to set my timer here. <laughs> there we go. Um, so there are easy ways to streamline all of that and I am going to share with you that information. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about me. Um, I am the founder of The Conscious Companies. We have been serving mission-driven messengers and entrepreneurs for the last 12 years. Uh, and prior to that, I've had 35 years of experience in publicity and doing radio podcast tours and speaking engagements. I've booked over 10,000 interviews and speaking engagements through the course of my career. And as you heard, I'm the creator of Speakertunity. Now, what's really fun about what I do is I love it and get so excited when I see people really begin to realize their dreams. I'm gonna tell you a little bit why that's so important to me. So. Let me go into a little bit more about what Speakertunity is. It is the speaker and leader resource company. Now, we are des designated to not only give you the leads, but the tools and the resources to get you booked. 
Speaker Tunity Cities, we'll talk more about, gives you regional speaker lead directories in all, all close to 60 markets in this country. There is Speaker Tunity Radio Insider, which gives you 40 radio shows and podcasts where you can pitch yourself. Speaker Tunity Summits, where we have virtual summits with open guest presenter seats and giveaways that looking for partners. We have an easy booking system if you've never booked yourself before. One of the hottest things going right now are virtual networking opportunities. We've identified 200 of them, 40 just for women, and we've aggregated them so it's easy for you to find. Speaker Tunity Sheets, if you want your Speaker One Sheet or your podcast introduction sheet, we'll design it for you simply and easily. And then if you want to get on a TEDx, on a TEDx, we have downloaded all of the information in the TEDx site so you don't have to go wander all over it. You can go directly to this um, great spreadsheet and see what's available to you, what's virtual, what's live, what's close to home, um, and what's coming up soon. So that gives you an idea. Now, I talked about the fact that I do radio podcast tour. I, I introduce leader, authors and leaders to 9,000 radio shows and podcasts all at the very sa same time. That's under the Conscious Media Relations brand. Um, and you've seen, you might recognize some of these leaders, Don McGarrow-Lees, Four Agreements, Joe Vitale, um, Mr. Fire, James Twyman, uh, The Peace Troubadour, Denise Lynn, Ari Ford, The Soulmate Secret, Chris and Janet Atwood, The Passion Test, Hay House, uh, Maureen St. Germain, and a lot of others. We worked with a lot of folks that are powerhouses, but we also work with a lot of first time authors. And I'm very proud of the reviews that we get on our website for the work that we do. So how did I get here? So it, it, would it be okay if I told you a little bit of my story? So I started out at the age of four when my, my father had cancer. Now this was a life-threatening cancer. And at the time, most people died from it. And I am so grateful that my father survived, but he also was financially wiped out. And so my family had to start all over again, and we moved to a new part of the state. Now, I don't know if you guys have felt what it's like to be like an outlier. Anybody has had that experience? But my peer group decided I was really different, and they didn't want anything to do with me. Um, we, you know, my family was culturally different. We were religious different. We were politically different than the prevailing environment. And so they basically said, you know, don't come near us. We don't want anything to do with you. So I wanted something of my very own that made me, made me feel special. So I married my favorite two passions, the Los Angeles Dodgers, go Dodgers. Um, and we had quite a year um, and writing. I love to write. And I told my parents at the age of 11 that I was going to be a sports writer. Now I'm old enough guys that there were no women sports writers. And, but this was what I wanted to do. This was my inner passion. And I am, you know, you can imagine what my peer group said. I mean, they were already, you know, uh, uh, passing, you know, notes about how odd I was. Well, when I told, said everybody that this is what I was gonna do, you can imagine the response. Well, I believe that success is the best revenge. So before I was 22 years old, I was at the Detroit Free Press. I was at the Associated Press. At 22, 21, I was at the Los Angeles Times. At 22, I was at the Washington Post. And by the way, I did co-host Dodger Dugout that summer. So I had the great joy of realizing my dreams very early, my first dream. But then I decided that I wanted to go into sports PR. And there were only guys doing sports PR. And you can imagine when they saw me coming, they wrote me off until they saw my client list. I went on to have a world-class client list, an office in LA, an office in New York. We became one of the largest sports special events and cable TV PR agencies in the neighbor, in, in, the, in the US. And here is are my sports clientele. The last thing I did was I launched the worldwide poker, poker uh, tour uh, and, the, and the entire world's poker phenomenon. Now, well, I tell you this because you know that I know how to get people booked. This is what I do. And this is what I want to teach you. But one of the reasons that this is so important to me is because my voice was silenced by my peer group. I do not want to see that happen to you. I want your voice to get out there. 
So my mission is to help the world's transformational leaders, people who are doing something changing people's lives, deliver their empowering messages to a far greater audience so together that we can impact humanity and the planet. So you know that this is coming from my heart. So I'm gonna tell you today about the three paths to visibility that will fill your client list. Now we all know that there's an audience waiting out there and the opportunities are really astronomical. And especially today when there are so many people sitting at home, not being able to go out to work. What are they doing? They're consuming media. So this is your shot, whether it's virtual speaking or whether it's uh, radio shows and podcasts or whether it's virtual summits. And those are the three things we're gonna talk about today. Now, the power of visibility can never be underestimated. This is a quote from Margaret Cho, the, um, Steve, Steve should know, uh, um, Perry should know, a great comedian and actress. Um, and she is really, truly right. That visibility is your, is your golden ticket. This is the cachet that you need to drive your business. So without visibility, you'll lose your momentum, your time investment, your money, and your passion. If you're not visible, you're going to, you know, your business is going to stagnate and you're going to get frustrated and lose the enthusiasm for what you went into in the first place. So Villa's visibility matters. You have to be visible. You have to be more visible. You're getting the picture here, I think. But the days of if you build it, they will come are over. Many of us in business for a long time think you have a fabulous idea. It's so great. How can they not come to you? But that's not the world we live in anymore. If you're not out marketing yourself in some way, shape or form, then you're just going to be sitting around waiting empty handed. In order to fill your bushel, you really need to be where your audience is. And when they know about you, they will come. So are you ready to put yourself where those clients will find you? To fish where the fish are? Let us get moving. So strategy number one is speaking engagements. Getting on stages is the single most effective way to attract new clients. And as I say today, those, those speaking engagements are right now all virtual. Now, those in-room speaking engagements are going to come back, but they're a way off for us. And of course, some of the people started to open up again, and now we've had this third wave and everybody's back uh, in, in their, in their, um, behind their walls. But the good news is there are so many opportunities. I just heard last week that there used to be 7,000 speaking engagements in North America a day. Now there are 9,000. You think you might be able to find one out there for yourself? So today with speaking, there's lots of different kinds of stages. There are stages where you can go to lo local meetings, venues and associations. They are incredibly wonderful opportunity because they are so welcoming and they're easy stages to get on. There are conferences and those are bigger and those are harder to get on. Um, there are venues uh, that are, you know, like fixed places like spiritual centers. There are so many different kinds of opportunities. Do not sell yourself short. And of course, there's the corporate marketplace. That's a great one. It's just, uh, you know, you really, that's, that's a tough one to get into. Um, but if you've got the right juice and the right topic, then you can certainly do that. And I'm just touching it, touching on it. And there's a couple of different kinds of speaking engagements. There are three different kinds of speaking engagements. One, getting paid to speak. That is the hardest to find today. They are still out there, but they are, you have to have avenues to get a hold of those people and to connect with them. And we'll talk about some of those. But the way more lucrative are speaking to sell from the stage, something where you make an offer. 
And if you can't sell from the stage, then essentially you have an opportunity to make a free offer. Now, I know people, some people feel that, you know, that that's not worthy, but trust me, getting people into your community, building that relationship and nurturing them is going to be a very profitable opportunity if you can begin that journey with them. And as for um, those that, uh, you know, some people are a little intimidated by the concept of selling from the stage, think of it as an invitation. You're just simply making an invitation for somebody to come along with you so that you can help them with something that they're having a challenge with. You've got a solution and you want to basically nurture them along to, to implement your system so they can find a, a solution. So one of the big things that hinders people who are spe budding speakers is that they say, I'm gonna go book my speaking engagements sometime this week, I'll get to it. And they'll get to the end of the week and they, the time is gone on all their clients. There's no way that they've actually had time to do this. So I'm gonna tell you to book time in your calendar, three hours a week, three hours a week, that is just for you to do this. It's like you're making an appointment with somebody else, block it in your calendar. Because as I say, if you can't do the time, you can't earn the dime. So when you're prepping for doing your speaking, you're gonna have a, one great signature speech, but you can also kind of carve it up or have all additional presentations. Because if you only have one presentation, one arrow in your quiver, it had better be a bullseye. If you give people a choice, different audiences, different booking bookers are going to take something different. So you can parcel this out in a lot of different ways. Um, you could have a, the same talk, but basically rebranded for different audiences. One for a personal growth audience, one for a business audience, one for parents. Um, you might have a, a, three or four different levels. One might be a key, to, you know, a, 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 of experience, or you might want to do one as a keynote, one as a workshop, one as a luncheon. Dinner. You want to have the different ways in which you can make this accessible to those speaker bookers. Now, if you're not yet confident or in, in your speaking skill, there are three ways to really get there. The first one is debut locally. Get on some of those local stages. See how you do, see what works, try it again, um, and then really hone the presentation till you feel comfortable on that stage and you're really delivering it with power. The next thing is you can just start out with something like Toastmasters which is a teaching environment for you that will enable you to really test and see what and see what other people are doing. And lastly, get men, men, get mentoring. There are fabulous speaker coaches all over the place that will get you up to speed on your presentation, on your stage pre, uh, performance, on the the con your, your speaking you, the uh, the concept of your uh, signature speech and structure. Um, and even on uh, the, how you uh, invite and enroll people from the stage. All of that stuff can be learned. And if anybody needs speaker trainers, I have a bunch of folks I can refer you to. A little water here. To get booked, you must stand out. Bookers see too many proposals from people who sound like everyone else in the niche. If you don't carve out your distinctive difference, you will be left behind. If I, I had a buck for everybody who said, well, I take people to six figures or I help people um, uh, correct their limiting beliefs. That is not enough, folks. Everybody has said that. You have to have something very distinct and unique. What is your unique selling proposition? What is it that makes you different from anybody else? Do you have a specific niche? Do you have a methodology? Do you have a track record that is, is um, you know, really defined? Look for what makes you different and that's what you're gonna market yourself as and to the, the uh, speaker booker. Now, here is the single most important thing that you should know when selling yourself to any speaker booker and actually in any of the platforms that we're talking about. It is not about you. If you're telling them all about your credentials, You've, and that's what the focus of what your, your pitch is, you've already failed. 
your pitch much tell that speaker booker what you're going to do for that audience what is going to be the problem what pro uh, to, the outcome what is the problem that you solve for that audience this has got to be the focus of all your written communication it's got to be the focus of your verbal communication what is the going to be experienced when they walk out of that room so if you focus on your own credentials and expertise you've missed the boat your audience is asking w i i f m what's in it for me you know that radio station so one of the great tools that you need is a speaker one sheet and this document paints you as the professional that you are and what's in a speaker one sheet is a bio that's concise and that speaks to what you bring to the audience. There is going to be some testimonials here that is going to show why you're so important and good for this audience because they want, you know, they want to hear it from other people. You're going to have your three presentations outlined. That's really going to be distinctive so that on especially on the back so that they know what topics you speak to. And then it's your call to action book you and you know here is your contact information but you want to do you want to have some great images from this etc it's really important you want to and you want to have contemporary images not something that's 10 years old um because there's a big disconnect when you walk in that room and you don't look like what that audience audience thinks you're going to look like because that's what your pictures say so i i know we're all a little vain uh but you can have new pictures taken and you can do a little touch up to them, but not too terribly much. Jackie, are you up for a couple of questions? Sure. First one is, uh, I am trying to understand about getting booked for speaking engagements. Is Jackie coaching people to get booked or does she help people to get booked? The only booking I do is for radio podcasts. The rest of it, I teach you to how to do. Uh, I do not book speaking. So, Question from Liz. Could you please get Jackie to send a list of speaker trainers? Um, what I would prefer you to do is tell me where you are and let me, you know, send me an email. And my, emails, my email is in the chat box, Jackie at Speakertunity, and I will see who is in your area that might be good for you. And the final question, can you give us an example of what is considered unique? Um, hmm. is Long question? before everybody was doing LinkedIn, there was one woman who branded herself as the LinkedIn lady. And for years before everybody else cut on to LinkedIn, she made a very good living by helping people figure out how to manage on LinkedIn. Today it's commonplace, but in the very beginning, she stood out in a very significant way. Um, some of the other ones, um, I'm just trying to think. Well, you know, here's, it's what I'm doing, for example. I don't teach you how to get, to, there are gazillions of speaker trainers out there. That's not my gig. I teach people how to get booked. That's what makes me unique and distinct. And um, for example, um, Shireen, um, you know, you, if you can find something that people are really dealing with on a, on a very specific, you know, situation, like you're the anxiety master and focus on that and focus on that and focus on that and get, you know, build your website around it and you'll, you'll attract a larger, a larger audience. It'll be easier for you to book something like that. Is that pretty clear? No okay. further questions. Okay. All right. So let's go on to the next one. So now we're going to talk about where you find your speaking gigs. So um, the first thing is tap your inner circle. You'd be surprised who knows people who have a stage for you. It could be uh, your you know local meetings around your neighborhood or your community or in your industry. It might be your parents, your relationships, your friends. It might be other speakers you know. It might be people that you're part of a mastermind with. It might be your customers and your clients. Start asking people you know, and you're going to see some of those speaking gigs come up. But if you're going to go out and start a formal launch for these kinds of things, then 
Um, here are some of the ways to start. Google is a great resource. So let's say that you want a certain kind of industry meeting. Um, so you can simply say, um, I want uh, psychologists plus the market, psychologist meeting plus the market. You want to do general networking. So networking, business networking plus the market, women's business plus the market. Start Googling keywords that are that will bring up the kinds of meetings that you want that will do that for you. Meetup is a great another great source. Nice thing about Meetup is you can actually register for your subject matter or your region and they will start sending you meetings that pop up in your area. But this is a great, a great resource. And then LinkedIn, if you're looking for corporate, this is really where to find it. Um, this is where you either go focus on a particular company and then see that for, and you're looking for people who are responsible in that company for bringing in speakers. It might be um, human resources. It might be sales and marketing. Those are the two that you would start with. Um, and then if you're looking for conferences, you start looking for people who are having the names of like meeting planners and conference organizer and um, and uh, um, conference planner. And so mix and match various words in LinkedIn and you will find people in those professions and then you can reach out to them. Now, another great source if you're looking for speaking engagements is Events in America. This site will tell you about events that are six months in advance. Sorry, you Canadians, I don't have the, the, uh, the equivalent of that one here, but the, in, here in the US, they will give you a look six months ahead of what, <clears throat> of what is coming up. And while it won't give you the speaker booker, it'll you, tell you what conferences are coming up and then you can go look at them. And I'm gonna give you something that's not on here too. Go to visitors and convention bureaus in your neighborhood and start asking, finding out what conferences are coming up in your city in the future, because a lot of those bookers don't want to pay for somebody to come, bring in from out of town if they can get somebody that lo that's local and they don't have to pay all their travel. So reach out to a lot of those companies as well. And then the directory of associations. This is a great resource. It lists all of the associations in the United States by state uh, or by industry. And I'm the Canadians might be in there too, but I'm not, I, I don't recall for sure, but by, or by industry. So if you just want, uh, you know, healthcare, or if you, uh, or just you want your real estate, or if you want just your, your state and you'll see all of them and you can reach out to those associations. Now, here are some other possibilities. You can create your own opportunity. First of all, stage your own event. Obviously that's going to give you the ability to have the kind of event that you want, attract the audience that you want, et cetera. But a lot of opportunities also are on other people's stages. And this was really very prevalent before COVID. And a lot of these people are doing their, are, are still doing events. I've been, I've been on three speaking events in the last two weeks myself, um, where I had the opportunity to show up and be on somebody else's event. Um, and uh, it was very successful. But some, most of the time when it's somebody else's event, they're gonna ask you to pay to be on it. Yes, you have to pay to get on some stages. And if the numbers pencil out and you know how many people you generally can get from an audience because you've got a track record, then it's worth investing in it. However, here's a little secret. If you put on your own event and they want to get to your audience and promote their event so that they can get those, your audience to come over to their event, you can do what's called a stage swap and they will waive their fee. If you give, if you give them your stage, they will let you on their stage as long as there's a, um, a, a similar kind of audience and, and size. So those are great ways to get on other people's stages without having to pay any money. Strategy number two. Now we're on to radio shows and podcasts. Um, these give you targeted audiences of listeners eager for answers to solve the problems in their lives. A showcase for you to shine, share, and invite. Now, radio shows and podcasts are great because they really are reaching very targeted listeners today, especially in the podcast sector. 
you know, in, in the old days when, you know, when radio was in the, in its, in its heyday years, um, the, you could get maybe five minutes on a radio show, maybe 10 minutes, and you really didn't know what the audience was and who was listening to it out there because it was a shotgun. It just threw the, this big, great big net. But with podcasting and when it's come along, these are, are like silos. They are very defined audiences of people that are really interested in what that host is bringing to them. So if you get on a podcast, you're very likely to be talking to your target audience if you've been matched with, with the right podcast. And then, you know, the other category that we overlook a lot of times still, it was, you know, is internet radio and don't overlook it because it's got some great, great opportunities. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what those are and how they are in here in a second. So the way to get on any of these is a compelling radio podcast pitch letter. Now, um, we tend to write a, a, a page and a half. They don't have to be that long. Um, this is what works very much for our audience when we're doing our, our, our radio uh, podcast tours. And um, so the um, so your letter really needs to, in the initial stage, in the first paragraph or two, really address what we were talking about. What is the problem that you solve? Or what is the compelling story that you've been through, your human interest story that has helped you rise to this opportunity to now teach other people how to do what it is that you do? So those are good, really. But there's lots of other ways to get in. You can make your make your pitch um, holiday specific, or you can um, talk about trends that are going on, or you can talk about what's going on in the world and how your 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 issue is so related to that. There, there's a whole series of hooks that you could get in. But the, the, be that it is a may, that first paragraph or two has got to be really compelling, and they're not going to go past it. The next part part of the body of the pitch is why you. Who are you to, to be talking about this? Are you the author of a book? What, what, what is your track record? Do you have certain credentials? Um, you, what, what have you achieved that's gonna make you the expert in this? So that's the body. The last part of the pitch should really be about what are you gonna teach in that interview? What are you gonna talk about? Um, and we like to put that uh, an overall general paragraph and then we go into bullet points. We start say, and your audience will learn the following. And then we, we indicate specifically, or we'll discover the following so that the host knows exactly what they're getting. What is it you're bringing to the table? And keep in mind when you're on these shows, you must bring value. It cannot be just a commercial. It's gotta bring value. So this is really important. And I will say that there is one other thing that's really being very popular today. And that is a, um, a uh, podcast introductory sheet. And it's a lot like a speaker one sheet, but it's only one-sided instead of two-sided. And it gives them kind of a quick overview of who you are. It's very professional and very cool. And as, it's, as I mentioned, it was something that we can help you with if you really want to, to, if you need that as well. So let's talk about broadcast radio. If you want to get booked on broadcast radio, you go find your local stations, um, just by Googling, uh, you know, local station in your market. And then you go to the station website and look for local shows. Many of the, of, of the radio sh stations have gone to nationally broadcasted shows. Now, great if you can get on those, and the, but you have to go straight to the producers at those and they're, and they're big. Um, but the local shows are easier to get on and you're going to look for morning, morning shows, health and wellness shows, uh, women's shows, anything that's locally based. And you, oftentimes they'll give you the email of the host in the, in the uh, website. If not, you can do the old fashioned thing, you know, pick up the phone and call and get the, the name of the producer or the host. If it's a big show, it'll have a producer. Otherwise most shows now, are the, the host is the producer. And then um, the, um, the, the, uh, and then um, and ask for the phone number and the email and then do that follow up. So that's the best way to get on, on broadcast radio. Now, internet radio, there are a series of 
um, of networks. Now, first of all, there's the big aggregators like Blog Talk Radio and Voice America, and each of them have channels by subject matter. So you can go in there and find the channel that's associated with your subject matter and then go and see if they give you the email of the host. And a lot of times on internet radio, they do. Now, in addition to that, there are um, uh, genre specific radio networks. So for spirituality, um, it's a, a BBS radio. For health and wellness, it's healthylife.net, for example. Um, for um, um, women, it's women for women. For business, it's business talk radio. So you can go out and find these specific genres of radio shows. And what's great about internet radio is they're gonna give you a, an hour's worth of time. And many of them have really big followings. I know a guy on blog talk that has hundreds of thousands of listeners. So don't dismiss them because they're on blog talk or internet radio. Now podcasts, God bless them. Podcasts are fantastic. And you're going to find them in these places on iHeartRadio, on Op Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, and then lots and lots of smaller networks. But here's the challenge with podcasts. They will never tell you the email for the host there on the podcast page. You're going to have to go hunting. You have to go straight to find, see if you can find the host's personal website. If you can, then oftentimes there might be either an email there or um, there's a contact form. And if you can't find an email, then the contact form is the next best thing. Now, keep in mind, some of these shows do have submission links. Now, you can use those submission links, but if not, you need to put your pitch into the contact form or write out the e and, or, or, or put in an email saying, please give me your email and the process to apply to get on your show and use that. And, and usually what that do will trigger an email back to you right away and you can capture the email from that. So that's the way that you can get, uh, get to the podcast hosts. Um, and God bless them, these are fabulous opportunities. And there are, count them, now a million podcasts, a million podcasts. So take advantage of them. Um, Roger, do you, do you want to check if there are any questions before I jump into the summits? There are no questions. Okay. Oh, there looks like there is a question that just showed up. Oh, hey, everybody, I must go. No question. No question, Jackie. All right. Virtual summits. Um, so um, virtual summits are a great tool to build your list, reach new prospects, and in some cases, enroll new clients through these synergistic joint ventures. Now, just to be clear, I'm assuming that most of you know what a virtual summit is. And this is where one host gets a bunch of other leaders together to talk on a specific topic. And everybody promotes to their own audiences and brings people into the, to the, the co-op. Now, the good part about this is that you are going to be exposed to people you never would have had any exposure to before because they're coming in from somebody else's list. It gives you a vast new audience, a new landscape to paint on essentially, um, and gives you an opportunity to really um, you know, grow your opt-in list to, in substantial numbers and substantial ways. The benefit of these are twofold. You can actually be selling what your, your program is in, in a subtle way because most of them are not selling we, uh, summits. They're usually more, um, uh, what I mean, uh, they're mostly an opportunity to present a lead generation magnet that's free and get people in, but you're still subtly selling what it is that you offer. So let's talk about what it takes to get hot on the summit circuit. What you'll need, you're going to need a compelling subject that can be flexible to fit the summit theme. Now, the thing is that all of these are themed and you don't want to send the same pitch over and over to everybody because it, every one of these is different. It's not the shoe, the shoe fits them all. So you're going to have to basically either take your current presentation and tweak it to make it really applicable for the theme or build something entirely different just for this host and see if you can get it get on uh, and then actually go and, and, and create the, 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 uh, web, the uh, uh, presentation. 
Now, the other thing you're going to need is a great lead generation freebie, a landing page, which is simple and easy and that you can send people to directly. I'm going to give you one really important piece of advice. On the, when you name that freebie page, when you put it in chat boxes, when you're talking about it, it's got to be simple and easy to remember. So get a URL, um, you know, that is the, the domain name for that, that leads directly to that page or make it really simple. One word, dot com, and then uh, back, backslash and one other word. That's it. Keep it simple. Um, and it's got to be ready to go uh, and working and make sure the technology is all, you know, buttoned down. Now, here's the most important thing I hear from Summit hosts all the time. And this is the thing that's destined to get you a bad rap if you don't play the game. It's a willingness to co-promote. The thing I hear from hosts all the time is I gave a person, this person, a spot on my Summit and they didn't do the promotion. That will get you nixed everywhere. And Summit hosts talk about themselves. So if you commit to a, a, a host, a, a Summit, Make sure that you do what they ask you to do, which is promote X number of times to your social media, to the email, et cetera. Play the game. The next thing is you want a mini media kit. A mini media kit is going to give you very specific, um, you know, give the host very specific things they can cut and paste to promote you. Just uh, three paragraphs of what you're presenting with a snappy title, <clears throat> um, two paragraph bio, your social media connections and your website link. That's all they need. Oh, and, and, a, and a description of your free, free opt-in. It shouldn't be more than a page and a half. Um, and then if, you, um, if it is one where you get to sell products, keep in mind that the host is gonna wanna take 50% of whatever it is you're selling. So you would need to be ready for that if that in fact is that kind of a setup. And you also wanna have a good list size if possible because a lot of these summits have a minimum list size, which is generally around 2,000, 2,500, 3,000. So the more you have on the list, the more likely you are to get on, on these. So if you don't have a big list right now, start doing a giveaways and other kinds of things that are gonna build your list so you'll qualify for summits. And then most important, have great content. You know, these hosts really wanna know that you can not only inform and educate, but entertain their audience too. So make sure that you've got something that's really valuable to the audience. Jackie, a question from Jacinta. Uh-huh. Will we get info on tonight Zoom via email with Jackie's information? Yes. So stay with me just a couple more minutes. Okay. So um so where to find your summits? Um so you know you, you can find them in your emails. Um, because you'll see summits come all the time and you think, oh, that's somebody who's doing a summit. I want to reach out to them next and be and um, see if they'll take me in their next one. If you're in a mastermind, that's a great way that, you know, other people in your mastermind be put, might be putting on summits or put together a mastermind and then use, get everybody together to do a joint, joint program. And then the other thing is, um, other summit guest presenters. If you know of people that have been on other summits, ask them who they know. Um, if you've been on summits with people, they're a great um, resource of summits as well. So you're looking for a comprehensive list of gatekeepers where you can submit yourself for speaking engagements, radio shows, or summits, and you won't have to do any of the research? You got to be feeling like this, like I do, we, you know, I mean, how many hands do you have? It's got to be a real challenge when you're a leader and you're trying to hold down a business as well. And, you know, wouldn't you like to have an easy way to get yourself booked for stages, radio show summits to grow your business exponentially? Everybody likes easy, don't they? So I imagine you think that it would be heaven to have direct contacts for thousands of speaking opportunities with no research on your part, I'm hoping you think that that's a pretty good idea because that's what we have. So I wanna introduce you to Speakertunity Cities with thousands of speaking opportunities in your market instantly at your fingertips. Now, if you're interested in summits and, and uh, radio shows and podcasts, stay tuned because there's more. Let me tell you about Speakertunity Cities. 
So we have developed four different categories of direct leads for you. Business focused meetings, venues, and associations. We have captured 55 categories of industry, gender, and ethnicity that you can find that are specific to what your needs might be. 75% of this directory is business focused in some way, shape or form. And I'm even talking about mompreneur meetings here. But if you want health and wellness specialists or you want real estate people or you want entrepreneurs or you want um, uh, teachers or um, uh, uh, people in, uh, in uh, finance, we've got them all. Now, philanthropic and service groups. So this is all your rotaries and your seroptimists and your and in Canada your kin clubs um, and it, you know the, uh, Zonta and Sor we try to cover them all because so many of them have welcome opportunities and they love having speakers in and then consumer focused meetings venues and associates moms groups seniors parenting health and wellness support groups people that are suffering from some illness or disease um, uh, it, the LGBT military youth. Um, and, and other special interest groups and bookstores, libraries, and hospitals. And then lastly, spiritual life and consciousness meetings, unity, centers for spiritual living, faith-based groups, and consciousness. We have regional speaker directories, which have up to 1,800 speaker leads in your market of choice. So what would it cost to do this, all this research on your, on your own? I mean, just think of the thousands or to hire somebody to do it. And, and we're not talking one market here. I, almost every one of you today mentioned a market that we actually have. So let's add it up. Let's assume that your time's worth $120 an hour. That's $2 a minute. Altogether, if, we, if you were trying to add, do about 1,200 leads, which is what one of our directories averages, that's $12,000 of your time. Just think about that. You would be buried but we can do it for less than 25 cents per lead. We really can. So I wanna tell you about Speakertunity Cities and what we can do for you. The first Speakertunity Cities directory is just one. And I'm gonna, and stay tuned because there's a better deal here, is $479 just for the directory. But additional directories are 395 and we have bundles. So if you get three directories, we're going to give you one of your directories free. And it's a one-year subscription that's constantly being updated. And we're going to give you a PDF or an Excel file, either one. You can have both if you want. Now, I'm going to tell you one other thing. I, mean, I know people are uh, saying, well, what happens if it's out of date? Well, we know you're going to find stuff out of date. I don't care if it's one to 150, you tell us which ones are out of date, we're gonna get you the most information. This is a relationship. It's not, here's your directory and go away. We're, this is an ongoing relationship. And if what you, and when, what you download in another um, six months, there's gonna be new stuff. And what markets do we have? We have 60 markets in the US and Canada. On the way, we'll have all of them by about the end of the first quarter. We've got close to 30, 35 of them now. And one of them is Vancouver. Just finished that last week. One of them is Toronto and Calgary uh, Edmonton is on the way. But I heard San Diego, I heard Portland, Seattle, I heard um, uh, uh, Washington, we've got them all. If you just landed one client from these directories, it would pay for it. So here's just sort of some, some folks have said. Um, the beauty of speaker tunity done for your research, which gives me direct contacts with organizations, meeting and venues that I'm looking for speakers just like me. This is my friend Donna Blevins in a, a Florida Chamber of Commerce. She sold, she got, there were thir only 30 people there. She sold 20 books and got $400 in sales. This is my friend Jen, Jill Lublin. You might see her. She's a PR um, specialist and she teaches uh, courses on how to do PR. And uh, she, in one meeting down in San Diego, from she got from Speaker Tunity, she was um, she did talked to sixty people. She sold seven units of her crash course in publicity and had four thousand dollars in sales. This is my dear friend Karen Strauss. The one meeting that she did with us, she was able to sell twenty online courses for four seventy ninety seven each and made ten thousand dollars 
from one 20 minute presentation. And here's the one that I love most. Um, Aaron Lomanjack was able to set up 15 speaking gigs within two weeks with only a month in advance using her Speakertunity Regional Speaker Lead Directory. These directories are accurate, informative, and lucrative, she says. If you even wonder about purchasing these, don't waste your time thinking about it. Do it now. And she had, actually, that number is long. The, the, the latest number she could told me was she made $50,000 in sales and advanced ticket revenue for that particular event. So what would it like to be booked for 30 years a year, 30, 30 events a year or more? Just imagine, you know, what your schedule would be like and how much that would put into your, uh, into your uh, bank account. So um, the speaker tunity speaker lead directory is one aspect, but we want to make sure that you have the opportunity to take advantage of all of these radio shows and podcasts and virtual summits as well. So you, this package is going to give you everything you need. One directory, the one month of Speaker Tunity Radio Insider with 40 radio shows and podcasts every month. So you can test it and see if you like it. And Speaker Tunity Summits, which gives you giveaways so you can build up your lists and the virtual summits that, um, that are just waiting for you with lots and lots of different opportunities for you. We get, generally get uh, 20 to 40 different um, summits every month. It's everything you need to get started booking all in one simple package. So here's what I'm offering. It is a Speaker Tunity Cities Plus program. You get one market, you choose which one. You get one month of Speaker Tunity Radio Insider. That number's off, it's now 40. And the month of, and the first month of Speaker Tunity Summits. And I'm gonna throw in one other thing. It is a training on how to write your speaker bio that you can use in your speaker one sheet and for people to introduce you on stage to be so that it, that it really um, capsulizes who you are and what, you, what you're bringing to the table. So they love to, 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 to want to do business with you. So the total for this whole program is $549, but the value of it is $748. So you're going to get $200 benefit by just doing this program. And you can get there and take advantage of this by simply going to www.speakertunity.com backslash plus. So I'm going to do that again. Speakertunity.com backslash plus. So I would love to have you take advantage of this, get going, and really find your stages so that you can tell your story, you can bring your program, your product, your resource for people whose lives you need to be changing. And this is the way to get a hold of me. So you just, just sent what you were, you were asking about this. You can find me at Jackie at speakertunity.com. You can also find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Facebook Messenger. And you can schedule a meeting with me at schedule.jackielappin.com. So I am happy to answer any further questions. I would love to see if we can really fill up your speaking cal calendar with this resource. It's going to save you so much time and energy. Jackie, uh, Chris has the question, how do you promote yourself? Oh, all these ways. I am constantly speaking um, on podcasts, on people's masterminds, on people's stages. I also do a ton of virtual networking. Um, which was one of those products that I was telling you about. Um, I test them, frankly. I go on those virtual networking opportunities, see what's you know, see what opportunities there are, tell people what I do. People want, say they want to have meetings with me. The other real major um, source of um, uh, 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 marketing for us are, besides of our our own email campaigns, are JV partnerships. We work with tons of. Uh, speaker trainers and platform builders and author whispers who want to bring this to their community because they know that this is going to help them fulfill the destiny of what they're teaching them. I hope that answers your question. There, yes, it does. And there are no further questions. All right. So I would, uh, on behalf of our participants and myself and VBM, 
uh, and, and the viewers who will see the video recording of your training, I would like to thank you very, very much. And nobody can ever accuse you of not giving a lot of content. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank question you. from Michael on the chat. From your lens, what are the uh, pros and cons of accepting speaker gigs virtually on YouTube and podcasts that are just starting out? Say yes every time, question mark. That depends on you. Um, I, I am a believer that if there's just one person in that audience that relates to you potentially as a client, it's, you know, you just never know where your clients are going to come from. Um, I, I, there's a wonderful Canadian um, that you know, may know, Doug Vermeeren, and he told me a story recently how he talked in front of an audience of 3,000 people, but he made a ton more money talking to a group of about 22 people simply because they were the right audience and they, they really resonated with him. So if you have the time and you're starting out, go ahead and take pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. If on the other time, you're, on the other hand, your time is very limited and you really have a, a very defined audience and you only wanna be speaking to the community um, of that audience, then be more, more uh, discerning about the ones that you pick. Uh, Michael, did you want to unmute and uh, express this thought directly to Jackie? Michael? Okay, uh, I don't completely understand Michael's comments, so that's why I was inviting him to talk to you. Jackie, thank you very, very much. I know it's getting late, particularly in your neck of the woods. So let's say good night for now, but live audience do not go away. Thank you. Goodbye. It was and thank you.